Hello friends, um, Sarah here from the Centre for Mental Health. Um, I hope you're okay. I think uh, every time I start one of these videos, uh, I think to myself, what can I say that feels appropriate during this time? And frankly, uh, yeah, it's not easy. Um, but I just wanted to do a little video to talk about our uh, second forecasting briefing that's coming out tomorrow. So as you know, during this time, we've been doing a variety of things behind the scenes, mostly trying to make sense of things, mostly trying to connect the dots and help uh, policymakers and providers of services really make sense of what they're doing. And of course, um, we have also had uh, the terrible murder of George Floyd. Um, and I think that for us at the centre, it certainly has made everything that we do around equality, even the, you know, even more kind of, not significant, it's always been significant, but um, we all feel deeply, deeply motiva motivated by it and um, spend a lot of our time thinking through how can we make sure that um, while we're advocating for equality, that we don't in that mix lose sight of uh, the focus on racial justice. And I think we are making a renewed commitment to racial justice as we go forward. And uh, yes, please do keep in touch with us about what you think around around that. Um, so the forecast that we're publishing tomorrow is not going to release any big numbers, but what it's going to say is, look, um, you know, there's a lot of conversation out there around a tsunami of mental illness that's going to, um, you know, suddenly uh, kind of topple services as we go forward over the next year, 18 months, two years. The reality is, is that we think it's more of a rising tide of mental illness. And that's not to say numbers won't be big. That's not to say that the impact isn't significant. What we're trying to say is that um, there is, there is, mental illness emerging within groups that hadn't been mentally ill before. There are high risk groups uh, that, you know, might not be able to access services in the usual way. We're saying that, you know, as we march into winter, um, we need to be prepared for what we feel like is a perfect storm. A possible second wave, uh, the flu, um, a no Brexit deal, the end of financial safety nets for people in employment, for example, the furlough scheme. And we know from research that we've done uh, before, from uh, other studies that is happening all around the country and around the world, that the economic shock is probably the thing that presents the most risk and it presents the most risk to individuals' mental health. We know what happened after the 2008 recession. For some people, they still haven't recovered from that. And so I guess we're talking about preparing for all four of those things and others. There'll be other things that, you know, are just around the corner, but um, as well as our usual business, of course. But those four things are going to collide and create a situation where I think pressure on services will re-emerge. Uh, we will see um, families struggling to kind of hold it all together under the strain of, you know, employment worries or stresses about children returning to school. So there are a number of things and you um, will have your own thoughts and worries about it. I've got two children who have up until now been shielding because of underlying health conditions. And so the idea for me as a parent sending my children back to school in September, well, uh, to say it's frightening would probably be an understatement of the year. Um, but also know that we're all having to weigh up the decisions about living with the virus, um, living our lives, getting the economy on track. That's a huge amount of pressure. So in this report, we identify people we're most worried about. We um, talk about uh, the four pillars that we really want government to address and deal with through a mental health lens. We don't think there, there, there really is an easy answer to this. And 
I guess, you know, one of the things that we really feel strongly about, and this also fits with the racial justice, uh, racial justice points and the ideas around equality, but also really building communities, investing in communities again, and making sure children and young people have the support they need, families have the support they need, there is job creation, and that we're, I guess, creating a society that we want to live in. We as an organisation uh, co-authored and are a signatory on the social contract that was signed by over 51 uh, organisations across the charity sector. And that social contract speaks very much to the recommendations that we've made in our forecast. Do let us know what you think. Uh, we've got lots coming out over the coming weeks. As I say, our forecast um, uh, is out. Well, it should be out.